Hi, I'm Travis. This is Dev Tips. Today, I want to spend a few minutes answering a question. This question was left on a recent video we did about CSS frameworks. I love this question, so I wanted to share it with you. So here is the question. I've been a software recruiter for over 20 years. During that time, I've seen a lot of technology come down the pipeline and more than my share of trends. That said, one of the trends that I've seen is the heavy reliance on frameworks and tool sets by new developers. This has become increasingly prevalent in the past five years. For instance, rarely do I not come across a junior front-end developer, three years or less experience in my book, claiming to be a quote, expert at JavaScript, yet has confused it with jQuery, or believes that they are one and the same. I say this because when I send out code exercises specifically asking for a JavaScript solution, they send it back using jQuery. Then I end up explaining the difference using a few examples of my own, and they think that I don't know what I'm talking about. LOL. And the div soup today is scary. For instance, when I send out HTML and CSS exercises, I frequently get the HTML back using some sort of grid system buried in a sea of div tags when I specifically ask for HTML5 using current semantic markup. I guess my question is, do you see a hazard for developers getting too hooked on tools that offer a lot of shortcuts and reduce development time? Is there a danger in losing the fundamentals, not learning them at all, or even properly? Also, at what point in a developer's career would you say is the right time to pick up a development tool, for example, Bootstrap or jQuery? Again, great show. I look forward to many more videos. Also, I know that I may have hit a few hot buttons for some readers, so please keep the comments civil. Isn't that a fantastic question? It's phrased and framed perfectly. Thank you so much for asking it. That comes from Kamaboko1. Now I'll take a crack at giving my perspective on it. Now keep in mind that even though I have a YouTube show, I'm still an idiot, okay? So give me a little bit of slack in answering this. Now I have never used a framework in one of my personal projects. In the past, I've considered them very hack. I think this is because when I learned to code front ends, it was back in the day when the idea of a semantic web was was a big deal, right? It was a big deal in the evolution of the industry and even in the technology itself. The very idea of the thing which you so eloquently identified as div soup has always been a very repulsive thing to me. That is, until recently. Very recently, actually. I may have mentioned on this show that I'm actually not a developer. I am a professional designer. Having said that, I do tend to straddle the disciplines very evenly, and in fact, I may even lean heavily on the front end of things. But being the only designer in a sea of very talented software engineers in my office, I took it upon myself sometime last year and created what has become known as the pattern library in the office. The idea originally was to create a set of SAS mixins that were super cool and super smart, and you could use them to create a beautifully marked up and semantic DOM, and also to provide a number of useful tools to the engineers when they were writing their own SAS. I thought it was amazing and wonderful, but the engineers, they ignored it. Why? Because they didn't necessarily care about a semantically marked up page. It's a good thing to have and they respect it and they understand it, but that's not the goal. So what is the goal? Speed. Speed, speed, speed. As much as me saying this would make me cringe about six months ago, I understand now that building your interface quickly is more important than making sure that your class name describes your content. When you stop and think about the three building blocks of a rendered web page, right? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it becomes obvious why this div soup method is the fastest way to go. The HTML part is the most tweakable and the most commonly changed out component in the whole group. Whole JavaScript libraries are being created now not only to talk to servers and gather and interpret data and manipulate the DOM in little spaces, but really to render whole entire web pages. Angular, Backbone, Ember, all of these abstract 
the markup to JavaScript modules to be inserted in the page as needed. Now, if I'm thinking like an engineer and I'm used to chopping up web pages and spitting them out in different ways, then changing a simple class name to get a visual effect is a natural extension of that paradigm. If you meet an engineer that's not great at hands-on CSS stuff, that's because you don't use JavaScript to manipulate style sheets. You use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM and you know add inline styles or a new class. So if the name of the game is speed and you already have a set of common conventions or a framework of ideas that will quickly manipulate the DOM to create a visual experience, that's exactly what's gonna, what you're gonna use. And this is why a new front end framework pops up literally every other day. Now in my pattern library at work, I finally understood that engineers really want to rapidly prototype ideas, not fuss with semantics. Indeed, it's been said that the two most difficult parts of computer programming are number one, cache invalidation, and number two, naming things. Naming things. One of the hardest things about computer programming. So that's what I did with my library. I output all these very smart mix-ins into common classes. I divided the classes into an atomic structure, and I worked very, very hard to document everything. Basically, I tried to make it as fast as I can. Not performance, but usability. Usability for engineers to use. Now that doesn't mean that the CSS output is not optimized, and it doesn't mean that the markup is not semantic, but the focus is no longer on those things. The focus is on speed. Now the adoption of my patterns has been a lot greater since then. And because it's actually faster, the engineers can prototype can prototype ideas much faster. Now on this channel, on DevTips, we have this series where we're looking at these different grid frameworks. And this is mostly the first time that I've ever used them. And I've been pleasantly surprised on how well they make good on their promise to build prototypes faster. But therein lies the rub, right? Their promise is clear, but often, it's confused by people looking for a shortcut. If you consider the names of these frameworks, Bootstrap, Foundation, we can see the intention of the authors. These are intended to be tools on top of which things are built. Their danger though is that they can be too useful. Right? They can be a crutch in as much as it can be easy to think that being proficient with these frameworks is the same thing as understanding how they work. So to answer your question, yes, I do think that it's unwise to use tools that you don't fully understand. Furthermore, I think that it can be dangerous to make that practice a habit. Is this mustache throwing you off? Because I'm serious. When I teach a new concept here on DevTips, I really do try my best to start at zero. When we did the HTML basics series, we started with a history lesson. The same thing with the CSS basics series. When we did the start to finish series, we spent the entire first episode talking about user personas and having empathy. Even the second video was about wireframing and, and design, and we didn't even touch code until episode four, and we never used a framework. So to answer your second question, I don't think that there's a wrong or a right time to pick up frameworks, but I do think that it is always a bad idea to use a framework if you don't understand how and why it works. Can you open the files you just downloaded and read them? Have you? I think that they can be a great learning tool. Most of them are put together by amazingly smart and talented people with real world experience. Picking up a new framework and trying to understand it as much as learn how to use it will take you very far, I think. The video that this question was asked on is a part of the uh, Bootstrap series. I also recently made the foundation part of this series and learning the differences between them and their different approaches has been enlightening. After using a lot of them, you then have the experience to talk about what you like most out of all of them. It's kind of like dating, right? You have to get around, figure out what you like. Don't settle down with the first framework you meet. That's crazy. <laughs> so this video has just been a lot of me talking and I'm sorry about that. We'll do some codes next week, I promise. But here's a summary 
of what I'm talking about. I don't think frameworks are going away, but they will get better. I don't think that they've arrived yet. I would advise people to learn fundamentals first. Fundamentals are called so for a reason. They are the foundation of your knowledge base as a web developer. They are the foundation on which you build everything else. If you have weak fundamentals, you have built a weak house and it will fall over when the first gust of wind comes. Number three, a good way to tell if your fundamentals are good enough to be even considering using frameworks is to look at the frameworks. Open them up, look at the source code. Can you read it? Can you understand it? Do you understand why the authors made the decisions that they did? What were they going for? Often you can find commented versions of these frameworks and you will learn a butt ton by reading that crap. It is awesome. And last, I think it's a great idea to try a new framework every new project that you do. There are plenty of frameworks in the sea. Right? Get out there and meet some new ones. It's not you, it's me. I was holding you back. You're going places, right? Hey. I love you. I mean, <clears throat> I hope this answer was satisfactory. You're too good for me. So that's it for me. I'm done talking. Let me ask you in the comments below, Dev Tips Question of the Week. There's a few of them. Number one, do you think that it's a hazard for developers to get too hooked on frameworks that promise reduced development time? Is there a danger in losing the fundamentals, not learning them at all, or even properly? I would love to know your opinions. Leave your answers in the comments below. And until next time, keep on hacking. <laughs> Stupid.